with classes like these likely to be in place because of departments that insist that they be in place and insist that they have their role in the university. And knowing how much work is involved from even trustee pressure, university pressure, especially from groups that are like ethnic studies or even sociology or even anthropology, but mostly those that are deemed as progressive, liberal, leftist bent are going to say, uh, no, we don't want to go by the traditional standard, okay? We are, we are new social science areas. We need to operate by a different standard that encourages these values. And while they may not be the traditional values of university, they're going to argue values such as social justice ha should have their own place in the university. Hence, these titles that might seem peculiar to the notion of a, of a traditional university education with core learning principles. Um, how would you respond to something like that? Well, the Commission on the Future of Higher Education recently came out with its report. And what it found that was that there were many good things in higher education, but that it had become complacent and that it was rapidly losing uh, its ability to remain the finest in the world. One of the reasons that it found was um, the fact that students were not being well educated and there are national surveys now which talk repeatedly about the low literacy standards of American college graduates. Uh, there are repeated complaints in the business community that students come out of college unable to write, unable to understand basic mathematics. And I think in light of these kinds of concerns, uh, one of the American Council of Trustees and Alumni's goal is to redirect the attention of the institutions through trustees, working with faculty, working with presidents, to their role of addressing these needs of uh, basic literacy, basic numeracy, and an understanding and awareness of general areas of knowledge such as math, science, literature, areas that students will clearly have exposure to and need to know in a world where they are expected to have seven to ten jobs before they retire. Too often in the postmodernist world we have seen the curriculum go from a structured focused curriculum that ensures exposure to general areas of knowledge to what the American Association of College and Universities in an early report called anything goes and we think it's very important uh, for colleges and universities to focus on what matters, to focus on what they want their graduates to know uh, when they get out of these institutions. And by doing so, they can uh, rededicate uh, the classroom to ensuring exposure to broad areas of knowledge such as math, science. And that will allow other fields such as ethnic studies, women's studies to exist, but what it will at the same time do is require institutions to decide where do we have to put our limited resources, what is most important for our students to know, and then to uh, focus in that way. Now, does a person like a Ward Churchill have a place in university academia? I mean, can, can somebody like him, he'll have a job somewhere else, or is the connotation so negative about what he brings to the mission of university that it would you don't act that perhaps or yourself would not think that it would be conducive <coughs> to have him anywhere because whether it's his reputation, whether it's his misconduct, uh, I mean, what do you what do you see for how Ward can Ward Churchill work at a university to any benefit to the to the institution's mission or what would be considered by active standards as for the benefit, or for real scholarly benefit for students. Do you see any way that could Well, happen? we expect in our colleges and universities to have faculty who are hired on the basis of scholarly integrity and effective quality research. And I think if there are cases such as Ward Churchill where there is clear fabrication and plagiarism and professional uh, incompetence, uh, that clearly uh, it will not assist students uh, to learn the areas of knowledge that they need to know. I think there are basic levels of competence that must be sustained in our college and university campuses. And Ward Churchill is a case in point of someone who did not meet basic levels of professional competence. And it's important for colleges and universities, again, to, to assess the quality of their uh, of the classroom, for faculty themselves to determine whether or not they are providing a, a wide, open, robust exchange of ideas that, in, that imparts information to students in a, in a fair 
uh, way. So when we say how many Ward Churchills, it's not just a common, it, it's not just all these academic misconduct activities that Ward Churchills are doing, but when a university looks the other way. And what do you see as reasons universities look the other way? What do you think, or in the case of Ward Churchills, because he was a draw, because he is, I guess for lack of a better word, uh, a popular figure, unpopular with, with some group, but enough to gain press, to gain lots of attention. And it's, it seems that schools with the label of wanting to be considered progressive will want to attract that type of individual, especially it also comes in handy if you can claim an ethnicity that is also considered to be a, a part of the diversity program, whether or not that, that can actually be proven to be true or not. So what do you think the university's own intentions are for looking the other way? Because this didn't seem to be just, just a mere oversight. It seemed to be that the university really wanted to have a word Churchill and fast-tracked him to tenure, like you mentioned, with only a master's in communication. <coughs> what do you think are the incentives for universities to do this at the expense of all this bad attention that comes to them when it's impossible to keep it under, under cover? Well, this is, this is where it's important for faculty and presidents to focus on scholarly integrity, academic quality uh, when hiring. And clearly, Ward Churchill is a case in point uh, of a time when he was hired uh, when he could not uphold those standards. And I think the question is, why has this happened and what can institutions do to ensure that public resources are utilized to bring in excellent scholars and excellent teachers? In the case of Ward Churchill, clearly uh, that process went awry, uh, extraneous other uh, presumably other considerations came to bear and as the American Council of Trustees and Alumni has articulated in our report Intellectual Diversity Time for Action, it's incumbent on institutions to review their processes and to make certain that in the future professors are hired on the basis of their academic integrity and scholarly output.